Welcome to the Handyman's Haven. I'm Ray and uh, the project I'm going to work on is uh, to uh, put in an attachment in my travel trailer that I can hook up my Mr. Heater, my big buddy, uh, to my internal propane system. Rather than uh, taking a propane bottle into the trailer or running off of smaller propane bottles hooked up to the uh, to the heater, which is not advisable to have a propane bottle in the trailer. I'm going to tie into my existing propane system and I'll go through the tools and the attachments that I use to do this. Now the reason I want to hook up to my uh, propane system in the trailer is uh, when the furnace is running, uh, it's also running the fan. So when I'm boondocking, it doesn't take long for it to drain the batteries. Mr. Heater is a catalytic heater. It has its own internal fan, which can run by batteries or by plugging it in. But, uh, as I say, the reason I want to do this is that I don't have to run my furnace in order to maintain the heat during the day. I won't use it at night. I just don't, uh, I don't even use my furnace at night because uh, I just don't trust the gas uh, being turned on while I'm sleeping. But uh, having said that, the trailer does have gas monitors in it and a carbon dioxide monitor and a carbon monoxide uh, monitor and uh, they work very well because I've tried uh, different things in the trailer to see if these actually uh, activate and they do and they recognize uh, a gas problem very quickly. Now if you're not familiar with uh, the Mr. Heater, let me show you the three ways that you can hook up a fuel system to this particular heater. Now, one way is you can use a propane bottle of any size, doesn't really matter, and a connecting hose. This is simply a hose connecting the tank to the Mr. Heater. Mr. Heater has its own regulator. This is the high pressure coming from the tank. To the regulator where it knocks the pressure down. It also has another one on this side. Here's the other regulator. So you can hook your hose up on either side, whichever is convenient if you want to do it that way. Or you can use the little one pound propane bottles. Now this, we can take this hose off completely, put another one on the other side, another propane bottle, close them up, and it's totally self-contained with its own propane system, no hoses, no bottles to carry with it. Nice if you're going into an ice hut, doing a little fishing or whatever, and want to warm the place up. Now one other coupling you can use, you can remove the propane line altogether from here, but if we look right inside, A little difficult with the propane line on. If you look right inside, hope you can see this, right here, right inside here, is a coupling, a quick coupling, like this, just like you'd have if you're familiar with the compressor hoses, just like an air line, only this is made for gas. I'm going to attach that to a hose and then we're going to hook, this is our project, hook this hose right into the propane system in the trailer. And the reason we can do that without having a regulator here is now the propane bottle that we're going to run off of is going to be at the in its propane compartment at the front of the trailer already has a uh, regulator to reduce the pressure that it feeds to the trailer so all of the lines in the trailer are low pressure and this will simply tie into it and then we can couple right in here with our new line and now we don't have to worry about having a propane bottle inside the trailer. Some of the other features of the uh, Mr. Heater it's a catalytic heater alright there's pads in here and there's three different heat settings on your control there's a 4000 BTU, a 9000 BTU, and the top heat is 18000 BTU. And you control that with your low, medium, and high. So you can have this thing, once you're warmed up inside, just coasting to keep the dampness and the temperature up without using a lot of propane 
and using no power whatsoever. If you need power, you can use the optional plug-in. You can buy a plug-in, plugs into your little heater here to run the fan if you're plugged into a heat into an electrical source, or you can use its own internal batteries. It has a little switch on top here. And I use that when I initially start the heater just to get the air circulating. And once the uh, rooms have warmed up, then I just shut that off and I don't need any battery whatsoever. Now I'll just show you the tools and uh, the parts that I need to do our project here. Now, the first thing I'm going to need is a pipe cutter. I've got two here with the little guy and the larger one. Depending on where I'm going to cut in here, let's see which one works. Uh, next thing I need is a uh, tubing bender. You can use this or not depending on how careful you are, but the idea of this is that you can wrap, put it around the pipe and you can bend and flex the pipe into shape without actually kinking it. So that's a handy tool to have. Not necessary if you're really careful. The other thing we need is a flaring tool. You'll notice here on the end of the pipe it's flared and that's flared so that these fittings that we use it fits right over the end of the fitting and then the nut locks it into place. Sorry I'm in trouble with the getting in the camera lens here. There you go. That's the T we're going to put into the existing line in the trailer. You notice I'm using yellow Teflon here. This is specifically for gas. I've got a little card here that says no white tape. Do not use Teflon tape that is white. That's designed for your water lines, your irrigation, your plumbing, whatever. Designed for water, not gas. The other thing we need is the flaring tool. These could be had fairly inexpensively if you don't own one. And what you do is you clamp the pipe into the flaring tool like so. And then you use the actual flaring tool itself which slides over top and then you turn it down and it flares the pipe to fit onto your onto your tea fitting. Next thing we need is now if you can imagine this is our propane this is our propane line in the trailer. We've cut it in half. We're going to fit in a T like so. Right? All the a fit, the ends are going to be coated with the yellow tape. And then from there, we've got our T in our gas line. Now we can thread on our new gas hose like so and this runs to the quick coupler so here's my my quick coupler and in this particular case it can't thread directly on I have to put in a little reducer again yellow tape on the threads so this threads into the quick coupler this threads into the hose and then check everything, soapy water. Do not use a, a lighter to try and find the, the leak. <laughs> you may get a little bit of a surprise. But uh, so we're ready to go once we have that in and then we can run this line conveniently to where we're going to put the big buddy heater and snap it on when we need it in place. And we'll simply slide this back into a cubby when uh, we're not using the heater. The heater can be put away in the truck. There we have it. So our next step is to go out into the trailer and actually uh, find a place where we can cut into and then do that particular procedure. So we'll see you out of the trailer. Okay, here she is.
This is the area that I've selected for the Big Buddy. It's uh, right underneath the uh, refrigerator. There's gas right below that in the furnace. is underneath the refrigerator. And it gives me a couple of options. I'll show you what I mean here shortly. Okay, the, uh, there's a gas source underneath the refrigerator here. And what I meant by some options is that I can leave the heater right here. It's pretty well it's out of the aisles. It's still walk by it. And uh, it doesn't get hot on the back. It only projects the heat from the front. And when I want to get into the fridge, I know it's in the way, but I can just easily move it over. And that's in front of the pots and pans drawer just below the oven. Now I can access my fridge. without too much trouble and a heater still in a place that I can walk by so this is the grill for the furnace taking the screws out get that set aside there's the ducting for the furnace and the gas line is right there I'll get a little more light on the subject here. So there's the gas line feeding up out of the floor. Makes a bit of a curl and then goes into the furnace at the, at the back of the furnace there. So right here is where we'll be cutting into and putting our tea in. Then we can run along the floor here with our hose in through this little opening here which goes underneath the, the pull-out couch and bed and then I can probably just drill a little hole right in here this is all hollow in behind here. Drill a little hole there to uh, accommodate the hose and then I can, not using it, the hose can be slid back in place. Okay, in order to get at that pipe to be able to work on it, that's that one right in there, I have to take the furnace out. So this has been not too much fun. I've had to disconnect the duct work which wasn't too bad but I've got some wiring in there that I can't really reach but uh, well we'll continue on once I have that furnace out of there I'll have lots of room to uh, put in my tea. Well you can see here I've taken the cover off the furnace and uh, gone around with a, a knife and sliced away the uh, butyl caulking going around the outside here to get some more of that and seal it up. The uh, gas line coming into the furnace is right here. Don't know whether you can see it or not. Right in there. Pretty tough to focus, but anyway, I've disconnected that. I just have to shove the, the line itself right here back out of the way and uh, pull the furnace out so I've got some room to work in there. It's just a lot of screws. It's not that much work. I've gone and I've pulled the uh, furnace out of the compartment. And you can see I've laid the duct work aside here, out of the way. And uh, you can see down inside, that's the uh, copper tubing that I'm going to be working with. There's the attachment end. You can see the end there that attaches to the furnace. I put the cover back on, the outside cover. I put that back on overnight. Just keep any weather out. And uh, now I can remove that outside cover and I can work from outside. So I don't have to uh, stand on my head here and try and work through this uh, small compartment at the front. So there's my T right there. That's going to go into the pipe. And I've got my quick coupler end. What I want to do is I want to root this out 
as conveniently as possible so I've got a place here I can go through beside the furnace which goes into my storage bin which is underneath the uh, fold out bed here and on the end of the bed right here there's a little panel a finishing panel which luckily is only held on with a few screws so I can remove that completely and I'm going to bring my my coupler and bring the coupler through here like so and that can just uh, be pulled out any length I want up to six feet is the length of my hose so what I've done is I've reached around in behind here and I've marked out with the felt marker and I'm gonna put my hole down in here now to keep this as neat as possible what I thought I would do I would just disconnect right here and uh, that will be the only portion that's sticking out of the corner of the bin here right in here so I'm going to disconnect this drill my hole the size of this pipe right here and uh, fit it in so when I slide this back it's going to only go so far and not get lost underneath the uh, Chesterfield here now while I've got the furnace out it's uh, actually a good time to give it a good thorough cleaning see the circuit board here is quite dusty case and around the fan I'm going to clean the fan and even down inside you can see here even from the, the original build there's filings and cuttings from when it was originally installed at the factory so we're going to blow all that out and make sure everything's nice and clean before we put her back here's the panel that we're going to run the hose through underneath the uh, little pull-out bed in the trailer now this is the back side so I drilled through neatly I drilled halfway through and I don't know why I was in a hurry but I thought well I'll drill halfway through and then I'll come through from the other side and that'll give me a nice clean hole well it did give me a beautifully clean hole unfortunately being in a bit of a hurry I drilled that one instead so <laughs> what that actually is is we've got the screw holes here that holds the panel onto the side of the Chesterfield and I used that instead of this one here anyway we're gonna have to fix that so I've cut a piece of uh, laminate here nothing fancy you don't even see this area hardy it's down the side and we'll uh, put that on there to cover it up that's a dope you know when you're hurrying anyway it'll turn out good well there we are we've got the uh, the laminate installed and now I've reinstalled the the hose and that retracts yeah I can just work this with one hand there there we go that retracts nicely this portion will be inside the side of the Chesterfield and that's all you're going to see sticking out into the trailer until you need it and you just pull it out and attach it to the Mr. Heater all right got the furnace out and we're going to start working on the hooking up the gas line use my ducts hook up go up and hook onto the furnace when it's in place but by removing the furnace it gives us really good access to the uh, copper lines and I'll go outside and show you that in a minute here's my installation for my plug-in for the uh, gas line it's right here and that will just simply pull out so 
There you can see I've uh, cut the propane line and we'll go outside and I'll show you better luck outside. So what I've done here is I've cut the uh, propane line. Here's the, uh, the one that goes down to the furnace and a little stopper there that uh, keeps the air from getting in. And uh, so we've cut the line, got it in my flaring tool. We're going to flare both of these and uh, join them together with our coupler. See that oh, she's nicely flared, and don't forget to put your uh, your nuts on first. I had to recut this one, another dope, because I had flared it and forgot to put the the nut on. So this will come up like so, and we're going to join that into our our fitting here, like so, and that'll just. flare will sit on that. There we go. And I'll snug that up, get the other end done, and uh, hook them both together. And here we are, we're hooked onto the line that's still fixed into the trailer and we'll flare this one as well. Flared now. Bring that back. And now we're ready to hook in the other line. Okay, I've snugged these up, but not all the way. I've still left them so they'll swivel nicely on the pipe. Because what I want to do is I want to wrap this pipe back in the way it was and shape it so that the fitting for the furnace comes back around to where it should be. And then once I'm all in place, I'll snug everything up. Okay, we've got our uh, T in place. Let's just see if we can see this in the dark. There's the T, the hose running forward to the heater, and uh, yeah, now we'll install the heater, hook everything up, and see, uh, give it the soap test and see how she works. Okay, we've got the furnace back in, and just have to hook up the duct work, and here's our new fitting right here for hooking up to the heater, and uh, it out just shortly. Here we go, all the furnace ducts are hooked up. Okay, everything's hooked up. We've got our grill back in place and uh, I'll show you how easy it is to hook up our little heater. Got our propane line. Open up. Right in here is our quick connect. Yeah. And then you can close up the, the door is notched here and close it up and tuck the excess tuck the excess hose back in. There we go. 
Now I've got about five feet of usable hose so I can move the, the heater from in front of the fridge here. I can put it in front of the oven so it's out of my the fridge way. I can bring it across and put it in the entryway which probably is going to be the favorite spot because it's out of the way of everything. And uh, there you go. And she's that easy. We'll put, uh, see if we can get her going here. There she's lit, the pilot's lit. And uh, I know we don't have a heat detector on the camera, but uh, believe me, she'll fire up in a minute. I'll turn her on. Whether you can hear that or not, you can hear the catalytic trying to light there. Anyway, that she's all installed. The nice thing about it too is if if you've got children or whatever and they bump it or whatever, just the slightest bit of movement and she shuts itself off. So now even with the night, the uh, temperature setting on high, there's no propane coming out. You have to go through the whole procedure again to uh, light the pilot. and get her going again. That's it. Hope that provides many a cool evening some comfort for us. Thanks for watching. And we've got the furnace back in and we're all buttoned up on the outside.